Saul. Saul was the first king of Israel, but who was king of Israel before Saul? Who was king before Saul? No, before Saul. Did, did Israel have a king? They wanted a king like all the other people, but the Bible said they already had a king. But before Saul, who was king before Saul? God was their king, remember? God was their king, and God went out to fight their battles for them, and fought for them, and protected them. But they wanted a king like all the other kings, all the other nations that would go out and fight for them. And so, they got Saul. And who was the one after Saul? Several of you said his name already. So, say, right. It was David. And you remember which, which of David's sons was the king after him? Well, that's close. Okay, there was Saul and then David came. And God made a special promise to David, didn't he? He told David that one of his sons or grandsons or great-grandsons would always sit on the throne of Israel. Right? Right? Is that, 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 that what you get in there? And that, will, that promise is still true. Someday... One of the sons of David will sit on the throne of David. And his name is Jesus, because Jesus was the son of David. But after David came Solomon, and after Solomon came Rehoboam. And Rehoboam had um, an enemy named Jeroboam. Right? Remember Rehoboam and Jeroboam? And it was with Rehoboam and Jeroboam that they tore the kingdom apart. Right? It was in, in half. Is this right? Oh, that's something. Yeah. Okay. So they tore the kingdom apart, and in the north, they were called Israel. That's where Jeroboam went. And in the south, that was called Judah. That's where Rehoboam stayed. Now, even while there were still kings, God began, even, even before, even with David, God began to speak to, God would speak to the people of Israel through a certain man. There would be certain men that would come and they would say, this is what God has said. Does anybody know, not the name of a man, but what that kind of a man was called? What did they call that kind of a man? He would, get, he would go out in the streets and he'd say, this is what God has said. I think you need to Okay, he would be somebody, a speaker, kind of like a speaker. Um, maybe we don't know it. I don't know if I, I think I did say it. Sometimes there was other people that would get up and say, this is what God has said, and they were not saying the truth. Okay? So there was, sometimes there was false ones of these, and other times there was true ones of these. Do you know what that name is? It starts with a P. P-R. What do you think? Elijah, that's right. And Elijah was a true, what? True man. Swear. Uh, he served the true God. And, yes, and then there was there was other people that they did they serve the true God? No. They served idols. They were yes. Yeah, so there was. True prophets, that's the word we're trying to remember, the prophet, there was true prophets and false prophets. Remember, last week in our story, all the false prophets, all the false prophets that told Ahab that he would live and he would get victory, and one true prophet, Micaiah, told Ahab he would die. Whose prophecy came true? Uh, the false prophets or the true prophets? The true prophets. The true prophets. How did Ahab die? Do you remember from the story last week? How did Ahab die? Were you here last week? Okay. You know How did Ahab die? He just, this dude, he just shot a bow and arrow in the air. And God just 
That's right. He didn't shoot at anything, didn't he? He just shot up in the air, and it went up, 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 up. And when it came down, 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 it, it got Ahab, and Ahab died. So we see that the true prophets, what the true prophet said, the prophet of God, he told the truth, and it really happened. Now, in these old days, in, in the times when the Bible was written, what? Yeah, yeah, that really, that shouldn't be on the map. Yeah. Here, it kind of melts you. But it's going to go yeah, it's going to get harder. Get harder, you know. All right, okay. So, yeah, they got their, their coins from St. Anniversary. So, all right, so, the true prophets, who, how did they say, how did they know what to say? How did they know what to say? Let's not talk, speak out. Um... Luke, what do you think? The true prophet. God told them. That's true. Just like Jesse said. God told them what to say. So if when, when God would speak to the true prophet, and he would get up and say, this is what God has said, we would know that that is what God has said. Have you ever think, maybe you're too young to have thought this, but have you ever thought, man, I would really like to hear a true prophet and be able to know just exactly what God said? Have you ever thought maybe you'd like to hear a true prophet and know exactly what God said? Because we don't have prophets around today. There is no prophets around today. So is, do we, is there any way for us to know what God has said today if there's not any true prophets? There's not? You think, is there, how can we know what God has said today if there's no true prophets around today? The Bible. The Bible? Yeah. This book right here? If we read this, we'll know what God has said? Yeah. That's true, isn't it? The, we don't need any true prophets anymore, do we? No. All we need to do is read the Bible. And some of you can read, and you ought to read the Bible. You know, how often would you like to have God talk to you? You know you can have God talk to you all day long if you want to. Right? Every single day, every time we read the Bible, He talks to us. He talks to us. That's right. And if you like, if you let's say that you're having a really hard day, and you say, "I wish that things would go better. I wish I could understand what's going on. I don't like what's going on." You could pray and talk to God, and you can read your Bible, and He can talk to you. You can always, even if no one else ever wants to talk to you. I don't know if there's anybody like that here. Like nobody likes you and nobody wants to talk to you. You can always, God can always talk to you from the Bible. So anyway, but in the old days, they didn't have the Bible like that. They didn't have very much of the Bible at all. And what they had, they couldn't carry around in a book like that. They, the Bible had to stay like at the temple. It was not at their house. It was not close to them. And so... Um, every once in a while, they might hear the prophet of the Lord say, this is what the, what the God has said, and they would have to remember that. And once in a while, they would go up to the, te the temple, and maybe they'd hear the priest read from the Bible, and they'd have to remember that. They didn't have the Bible with them every day like we have. But, where are we going? The, the prophets of the Bible, they spoke for God. So, one day, Back, let's see here. Let's get the right guy here. Okay, you remember this man? You probably don't. I'm just going to say his name. This name is Jehoshaphat. Remember Jehoshaphat? He was the king of Judah. And he went up and he let his men and his soldiers fight with King Ahab. And King Ahab, Ahab was a bad man. But King Ahab died in that. And Jehoshaphat went back to his kingdom. And he was serving the Lord there with, his, with his, the people of his country. And then, one day... King Ahab's son, one of King Ahab's sons, came to Jehoshaphat, and he was the king of Israel. And all the kings in Israel, did they serve God? No. no. They should have, but they didn't. Some of the kings of Judah did serve God. And Jehoshaphat was one that served God. He shouldn't have messed around with these guys, even though they were kind of the same people. They all came from Jacob. But king of Israel came to Jehoshaphat and said, Moab has taken something that's mine. Will you 
help me get it back? And Jehoshaphat said to him again, he said, well, all, you, all of your people came from Jacob, just like all of my people. We're the same people. You can use our chariots, and we, we'll go, and we'll get that back for you. And the king of Israel said to him, well, what way should we go? How should we get there? See, because, and Jehoshaphat said, let's go through Edom. So all of Israel's armies came down here, and they got with all of Judah's armies. And so they had two kings and two armies, and they marched down. And the king of Edom, this country here, he said they could go through their land and attack Moab. And he even thought, well, I want to attack Moab too. So how many kings now? Uh, three. Three. Three kings and three armies, and they're marching through this land to get to Moab. But you don't know, you can't tell one thing about this land from this map. This land here is very dry land. It's a wilderness. And what in, in, in a wilderness, there's not very much water. Water. That's right. Not very much water. So these three armies are going through this land where there's not very much water. And, all, and by the seventh day, they ran out of water. Now what happens if you don't have water? Uh, you, know, you can die. You can die. Because your yeah. throat's going to get dry. Because well, your throat's going to get dry. Your body's going to lose all of its water. You're going gonna, gonna to die. It's going to be painful. So, they're in there, and Jehoshaphat says to, uh, says to the king of Israel, says, I wonder if there's a prophet of the Lord around here that can tell us what to do. And, you know who happened to be with them? Yeah. A man by the name of Elisha. Not Elijah, Elisha. And so he said, well, Elisha is here, and Jehoshaphat, he knew Elisha. He said, oh, I know Elisha. He worked and served with Elijah. He's a prophet of the true God. Let's see what he has to say. And so they got Elisha, and Elisha came, and he, there he saw, he came to Jehoshaphat, and who was with Jehoshaphat? Um, Jehoshaphat was there. Uh, uh, and the king of Israel and the king of Edom. So uh, three kings are there, and Elijah comes up, and you know what he did when he saw the king of Israel? He was angry. He said, I, you are a wicked man. You do not deserve to have the blessing of God. I wouldn't even look at you if it wasn't that King Jehoshaphat was here. Because the king of Israel, he didn't, he hated God. He did. Yep. He served idols and stuff like that. And so, Elisha went off, and he, but, but because Jehoshaphat was there, he decided he would see what God was saying. He went off, and he listened, and he heard something from God, and he came back and said, here's what you're supposed, this is what God says to do. He says, fill this whole valley, and there all the soldiers are there, and he said, fill this whole valley with ditches. Now, we know what ditches are in Black Oak, don't we? We got lots of ditches in Black Oak. So then all the soldiers got out there, and they were thirsty, but they got their shovels out, and they digged ditches, lots of ditches in the valley. And you know what Elisha said? Elisha said, you will see that God will fill the ditches with water. Now, is there water in the wilderness? No. 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 But, do you think there's going to be water in the wilderness this day? Yes. Why? Because God could do that, couldn't he? So they had to dig the ditches, and the next morning when they woke up, there was water in all those ditches. And you know what else? Food. No, not food. But all the soldiers of Moab, remember they were going, they were going to fight against Moab? All the soldiers of Moab, they looked out, and they saw that valley all full of water, and the sun was shining on the water. Now, sometimes, when the sun shines on the water in the early morning, it gets a certain red color. Uh-huh. You might have seen that. And so the soldiers of Moab, they looked and they saw all this red all over the valley. And they thought, all those three armies, they started fighting with each other and they killed each other. And look at this, the valley is just full of blood. Now, was it full of blood? No, it was full of what? Water. Water. 
And they just, they got so excited, they ran into that field. They didn't, they weren't worried about anything. They just thought, we're going to go and get all the things that those armies had. And what did the armies, were the armies sitting there um, fighting and having fought each other? No, they were ready. And they fought the, the, the soldiers from Moab, and they gained, besides getting water, they got a great victory that day. Well, Jehoshaphat, he died. All of us died, are going to die sometime, right? Jehoshaphat got older, and he died. And who do you think sat on his throne? He's the king down here. Who sat on his throne after he died? Who do you think sat on his throne? Luke, who do you think? I'll give you a hint. Do you think it was some other man, or do you think it was one of his sons? It was one of his sons, wasn't it? Because who sits on the throne in Judah? Somebody from the house of, who is the good king down here that God made a promise to? A man after God's own heart? Yes, God made a promise to David that somebody from his family would sit on his throne forever. So Jehoshaphat was a good king. His great, 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 great grandfather was David. And when he died, who sat on his throne? One of his sons. But his son that became king was a bad king. He was a bad man. He did not serve the Lord. And you know what he did? He took, and because he was the king, he killed every single one of his brothers. Every single one of his brothers. That was wicked, man. There was no reason to do that. He killed every single one of his brothers, and he did whatever he wanted. He didn't listen to God. And you know what they found? What came to Jerusalem? There was a letter that came to Jerusalem. And you, you, you won't know. So I'm going to tell you, this letter was written by a prophet of God. Yes? Who? God. Well, God didn't write it himself. God used the prophet to write it. Who? Elijah. Which one, Elijah or Elijah? Elijah. Elijah. The letter came from Elijah. And Elijah knew. And he told that king, he said, you're wicked, and this is what's going to happen. That your, your nation, you're going to lose your power, and other armies are going to come in, and they're going to take your children, and they're going to take your wives, and they're going to destroy everything that you have. And do you think that happened? Yes. Sure enough, it did. Not long after that, enemies of, Je of Jehoshaphat's son came to the and they captured his wives and his children. They took them all away, all except for one of his sons. I don't know which one, but why do you think one of his sons stayed? Right, and why would he need to become king? Because he's faithful to that. Well, we'll see if he's faithful. But he's not evil. Well, we'll see about that. But God promised David, right? Yeah. That there would always be one of his sons. And so there's always going to be one. You're very, very good um, thinking today. So today we have two prophets, and they work together. Elijah and Elisha. Elijah and Elisha. And Elisha was younger than Elijah. And it came time, Elijah knew that it was time for him to go to heaven. And and he probably thought he was going to die and go to heaven. And so, and Elisha knew, Elijah's getting older. And so Elijah said to Elisha, here, you wait here. I, God has told me to go over here. But Elisha, he was like, no, nah, I'm not staying. I'm not getting away from you. I'm sticking with you. And so Elijah and Elisha went through the land. And they got to the Jordan River. And when they got to the Jordan River, Elijah took his mantle of uh, uh, like a coat that he wore over top and he, I don't know if he spun it around, but he wrapped it up and he smacked the water with it and when he did that the water parted and Elijah and Elisha went across the Jordan River on dry ground and when they got to the other side Elijah said to Elisha, he said you know, I'm, I'm going to heaven what is, is there anything that you'd like me to do for you if I can before I leave. And Elijah said, if, 
can I be a prophet like you? I want to be a prophet like you. I'd like to have a double portion of your spirit like me. And Elijah said, oh, I don't know if you're sure if I can do that, but we'll see. And so they were walking along there. Listen, they were walking along there, Elijah and Elijah, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, came this chariot with horses and a chariot, and it split right between them. But it wasn't a real chariot. It was a chariot of fire. No, it wasn't devils. It was a chariot of fire, and it just split them up. So on one side is Elijah, and on the other side is Elijah, and then a whirlwind came around Elijah and sucked him up, and he went straight to heaven in a whirlwind. So did Elijah die? Yeah. No, Elijah did not die. He didn't. He went straight to heaven without dying. But Elisha saw it, and when he looked down, there was Elijah's coat that he wore. So he picked that up and he went back toward the Jordan River and he thought, hmm, I wonder if what I asked for, I got. So what do you think he did? He took that coat and he tried to smack the water and what do you think happened? Did anything happen? Yeah. It opened up and he went back across on dry ground and Elisha became a very great prophet. Elisha did twice as many miracles as Elijah. And he did more miracles than anybody else in the whole Bible except for one person. Who do you think did more miracles than Elisha? God. Yes, and who, what was God's name when he walked on the earth here? His name was Jesus. Jesus did more miracles than Elisha. But Elisha did more miracles than anybody else in the whole Bible. So, I have another prophet I need to tell you about, but we're going to have to do that another time. It's not taking way too long telling you about Elijah and Elisha. Okay? But what do we need to remember? Here's one thing that I want you to remember, and that's what we said at the beginning. How can we hear, how can we know what God said today? By the Bible. We don't need prophets. I'm not, I'm not going to get up here and say, the Lord I saw in a vision... I can say, I know what the God said because it's right here, and you can know what God said because it's right here, too. So we need to be making sure that we read our Bible because that's God speaking to us. Yes? Well, there are different... God spoke... God didn't speak in American English. So He didn't speak in Spanish. He spoke in Greek and Hebrew. So i got to say this really quick. So when He spoke in those languages, we know what He said in those languages. But when we translate from Greek or Hebrew to English, sometimes one person said, thinks it would be, um, let's see here, um, what's a good way to say that? Uh, okay, sometimes somebody sees the word that God said and they think it should mean patience, and another person sees the word that God said and they think it should mean long-suffering. Yeah, I don't know if you know what those words mean. But there's different ways to translate the words that God gave. You know what God gave us, but you didn't speak. When we read in English, we might see different words, but we know that it's all coming from the words that God 